man, being a parent is so wonderful. I mean, having children that we care for, that we teach, that we mentor, it just brings out the best in us. Partly why Jordan and I are here with you is because we love you. We love your kids. We want you to raise amazing kids. We love your family. And it is so tough to raise great kids, but it's worth it. And you got all these issues, all these struggles, all these things, all these challenges. And we're here on this podcast to just support you, give you tools for your toolbox. And now the issue of today is this interesting topic, Jordan, called people pleasing. Have you ever had a deep conversation with anyone about people pleasing? Not really. Usually you just use it as like, oh man, that person's a people pleaser. You could tell they just say yes to everything, right? Or mm-hmm. or someone might say it to you. Let's say you're in an argument and they'll be like, gosh, you're such a people pleaser. Why do you have to do that all the time, right? If you get in yeah, a conversation yeah. with maybe your spouse or your friend because you've said yes too much, right? Yeah. Um, it can cause tension and turmoil being a people pleaser. It's mm-hmm. often used as like a negative term. Yes, it, but the yeah. reality is like the reason why many of us do it is because we want to make others feel good or yeah. we are afraid of saying no. Yes. Yeah, I like how you said that. It's used in a negative term, but here's like here's the let's talk about this. On today's episode, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you the pros and cons of people pleasing. We're going to tell you some signs and symptoms to look for in yourself and your partner and your spouse and especially mm-hmm. in your kids. And then we're going to do a little section on the why. Why do people become people pleaser? And the most important things we'll do here at the end, which is action steps us parents can can do, can really stop people pleasing in our kids and ourselves and and avoid people pleasing. And thank you for everyone who is leaving us five-star reviews on, on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify for commenting on the videos and for sharing these nice words about the videos like somebody just wrote us jordan she, she her name is shelly alley and she says been listening to the podcast man it's great so thank you so much for writing us and you know so that's the thing about people pleasing though like everybody actually likes a pleaser like can you think of people know. in your life who are people pleasers aren't they kind of a joy to be around well yeah because you could ask them <laughs> to do anything and they'll say yes <laughs> yeah, i know <laughs> i don't want to make you upset right i know right hey um <laughs> Uncle right. John, uh, mind if I borrow $300? I'm kind of in the hole right now. Right. Yeah, sure, pay me back, whatever. I know. You know, but I think I think what's interesting, too, is there are people who are people pleasers, but I don't mm-hmm. think anybody wants to be titled that or labeled that. No, they don't, right? and they should I'd be like, dude, Sean, you're such a people pleaser. You'd be like, right. dude, you just dissed me. What do you mean I'm yeah. a people pleaser? Yeah, well said. It's almost like it, it should be in the same category as like you have anger problems. Or you have conflict problems. Like it, it is a, it's a manifestation of a, of a coping skill that is similar to anger. And we're going to get to the root of it. And we're hopefully this episode is going to change your life. You're right. So when you think of the people pleasers in your life, or even your own history of people pleasing, what comes up for you, man? What do you think of? I mean, myself, really. Mm-hmm. Just okay. you, yeah. you, we all go through stages of like learning how we're supposed to respond to certain Mm -hmm. life challenges, right? Mm -hmm. So like take, Mm -hmm. for instance, you're right out of college. Um, You got your first job, right? And you're in the professional world. And all you want to do is say yes, right? No matter what happens with that job. A, you don't want to get fired. You're trying to climb the corporate ladder. You want to prove yourself. So you're going to say yes to no matter what. Can you work overtime? Yes. Can you do this? Yes. And I look at that as like, well, that's good because that age is what you need. You need to be doing that to learn Mm -hmm. fast, as fast as possible. But also you can't like let someone walk all over you. Let's say you have a colleague who uses you as their pawn to fill in for you every Christmas or every birthday or and then, and then you just become that go-to person. Yeah, that's right. Let's let's do this. Let's make a little list here of the downsides of being a people pleaser because I really want you to really see it in your kids. Look for the signs. I want okay. you to see it in yourself and all of us. And I know I've struggled with people pleasing and different the two main areas I've struggled in is is one is in my marriage. I, I call myself a recovering avoider, but then sometimes now I struggle with people pleasing. And then also, yeah, in the workplace, it can be really hard to stand, especially when I was younger. So here's a couple of downsides, uh, and I'll just kind of go through, and I'll let you see if you if you want to expand on them or if I should expand on them. Mm-hmm. Many people okay. pleasers, they really struggle with anxiety, worry. Sure. Yeah, They're we're worried about they, what would mm-hmm. happen if dot, mm-hmm. dot, dot. Yep. Does, do they like me? Do they accept me if I were to speak right. up? 
what's going to happen? Oh my gosh, I'm worried about this. So this is like, you know, just like anger is really a secondary emotion. You know, people pleasing is, is secondary. Underneath that is normally fear or anxiety. Doesn't that make sense? Right. Yeah. I remember getting a lot of that in like high school, right? Like mm. you're learning how to surround yourselves with like, let's say the popular group yeah. and you just want to be liked and people yeah. ask you to do things that you know yeah. is wrong, but you're mm -hmm. going to do it anyway. I mean, that's another downside is sometimes people pleasers, they can cave into peer pressure or into a really aggressive person pushing their agenda or their will upon them because they're having a hard time dealing mm -hmm. with the conflict. They're uncomfortable being uncomfortable. And then they please to make the down that go away. And that can just cause more anxiety inside of them. Mm -hmm. an, okay. Another, what else? Another thing many, um, and this is a, a little list that I use when I am coaching even teenagers. My teen is co my team is coaching teenagers. And they're like, Hey, this is, let's make a list of the downside of people pleasing. And it's really good for kids to do this because oftentimes, not all the time, but some people pleasers, they struggle with having a best friend or from a close, intimate friends. Let me tell you why. Because on one hand, everybody likes being around people pleasers. On the other hand, if you're always with, if you're with somebody and they're just like yes manning you or they're not really opening up, they're not being vulnerable. It's like they're just there, but they're not really there. It's like you're, they're there and you like them and they're your friend, but they're not like your inner friend that you're getting, you know, you're going through the trenches with, you're getting crazy with. Does, it, have you, does that make sense to you? Do you agree? Yeah, I think also like you're not getting any respect from anybody by being that person, right? It's like mm -hmm. these moments where you stand up for yourself, where people yeah. will, re will like respect you more. And I, there was a... Oh, yeah. An instance, I just recently watched a little old movie with my, my, my kids, and there was a bully, and he'd pick on this, yeah. this little kid yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't until he stood up to mm -hmm. where he was like, all right, I respect you now. Now we can be friends because you yes. basically put me in my place, and you finally stood your ground. That's You just said the next downside of people-pleasing. It's, it's an integrity issue. It's like people like... They'll be like, hey, what movie do you want to see? Uh, I don't know. What movie do you guys want to see? Hey, what do you want for dinner? I don't know. Whatever whatever you guys want. It's like, it's like, can you speak up? Like, who are you? Right. Like, where are right. you? Can you say something? Like, it was cool the first few times, but now it's like, can you have an opinion? It's like, it's like people will talk about you behind your back. Like, you know what? I don't even know. Maybe they were just saying that. You know, you know how, oh, you know how Julie is. She just says stuff, but you don't even know if she follows through with it because that, that's, right. you know, and here's like, and let me blend to my next downside. Here's like my next, this is, I think I said this to uh, a mom in my VIP membership recently, and I think it changed her life. I said to her, really? you know, I think you're people pleasing. It's a form of lying. It's a form of deception. You're not being honest with your family members. Yeah. You're being honest with me. But you're not speaking up. She, this, this one woman had a challenging 19-year-old daughter. This daughter often took advantage of her, you know, would lie to her on a regular basis. And the mother struggles with conflict, would end up appeasing her, rescuing her, pampering her, people-pleasing her. I said, look, you're not being true to who you are. It's lying. And she was like, oh, my gosh, I've never realized that, which is ironic because her daughter was lying to her. And now she's having an aha moment that I'm actually lying really? to my own child. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. You know what? Also, as you, as you talk about them, I'm just thinking of different people that I've come across my life with. And there, there's, I don't know if it's a fine line or a thick line. <laughs> if anyone's ever used that term before. Oh, it's a thick line. Uh, <laughs> a thick where line. That's good. You're not the people pleaser. You're not right. the people pleaser. So now you're looked at even more negative because mm. you are opinionated you yeah. uh won't go yep. with the flow you yes. have a say about everything right yes yeah i've heard this so many times jordan that young people will tell me what are you when i ask them like what are you afraid of like why is it hard for you to find your voice they will say well i'm afraid of being that person i'm afraid of being like seen as really judgy or moody and, and that's, they have a hard time speaking up because they're living in fear of that right there. Or FOMO. I did it a lot of my life because I had fear of missing out. So yeah. I would be a pushover yeah. as long as it meant like 
not a pushover, but I would be a people pleaser as long as we were having a good time. Like, you keep I don't want to cause going. any conflict. Like, right. let's keep the fun going, you know? But isn't, isn't, do you, can you also see how people pleasing, it's a form of a mask. It's like you're putting on a mask yes. of who you are. But I think this is why, especially kids who put on this mask, because they don't know who they are. They don't know, like, they're just figuring it out. So it's like, it's better for me just to go with the flow and be a chameleon, something you talked a lot about on this show. It's one of your skill sets. Being a chameleon, isn't that interesting? Our greatest adapt. strengths is often our greatest weaknesses. So it's like, if you're really good right. at blending in with people, which I know you are, probably one of your struggles is like, am I people pleasing? Am I, if I gone too far? And, and before you kind of keep going on, on this list, I'm just, I, a lot of this stuff's coming up in this therapy session we're in. <laughs> um, but you know, a lot of the, the times that I, I would people please, it's like what you talk about where you have to pick your battles. And a lot yeah. of the time I was convincing myself yeah. that this isn't a battle I want to fight right now. So let mm. me just, it's fine. Mm. I'll mm -hmm. go do this for them. It's no big deal. Because yeah. you do say that, and you that is true. Yourself. Pick your battles. Right, yeah. But I, I, I would trick myself into thinking, oh, I'll do it later. And yeah. I never stood my ground later. Mm-hmm. We got a, a little friend group, you know, my wife and I, and two of the uh, women in the group are having some conflict right now. And with protecting their privacy and just saying it in an appropriate way, one one woman is is kind of causing problems, and she because she's bringing up drama in the group, so she's being oh, branded now <laughs> by like, oh, you're so dramatic. Why drama and queen? Then the, and then That's the other right. woman, the other woman who I'm really. I really enjoy her personality quite a bit. Some of the, sometimes people now are saying to her, um, in really nice ways, not like in a gossipy ways, like, you know, you're, you're, you, you kind of like are just always so positive. You're kind of like a pleaser. Like you need you to stand up for yourself and speak. So it's like, we're seeing how these, you know, we all got our stuff. We all struggle with it, but this is like kind of bleeds us to our next, next section of the show. Let's look at signs and symptoms. Uh, people pleasing in you and our kids is that okay because we're focused here on a mission how to yeah, stop people please. pleasing and avoid all... raising pleasers because we do That's not right. want to raise children who become adult pleasers or teen pleasers oh my gosh lots of teenagers have gone down a bad path right because they're struggling with people pleasers all right so here's just what i what i hear here's what i've studied and here's a little quote from an author named natalie lou people pleasing is an anxiety response when we're doing it and what we're really saying is, I'm anxious about something. I'm anxious about not being liked. I'm anxious about being rejected. Or I'm anxious that I'm not going to get what I want. Mm -hmm. People pleasing in a manifestation of anxiety. And so I think when I think of people pleasing, Jordan, the first thing I think is like somebody who doesn't have an opinion. They don't want to speak up because they have that anxiety and they're afraid of being vulnerable. They're afraid of putting themselves out there. Instead of having lashing out with anger or just leaving the group and walking away, it's like fight, flight, freeze, and there's a new coping mechanism. It's called fawn, which is what we're talking about here today. There's someone who's like not angry. They're kind of pleasant to be around, but they just are having a hard time finding their voice. They're just going with the flow. Right. I think of a, a very stereotypical um, you know, picture that everyone has seen, right? You've got this male, masculine, loud mm -hmm. husband, and then you have this yeah. small, timid wife yeah. who always gets talked over yeah. and mm -hmm. can never stand up for herself, right? Yeah. But you know, go, thinking about our kids now, what, what do you think is helping aid our kids into becoming such people pleasers? Is it it's probably everything, social media. I got maybe a whole section parenting. on this. Give me like four uh, minutes to answer that. That's the okay. why. Because I know you love the why. <laughs> okay, okay, why okay. do people become people pleasers? Let's just yeah, go through just the symptoms first. Yeah, me too. I did the research on it. And I've been working with your sons and daughters for 20 plus years. I've seen that. So here's another symptom that you are probably struggling with people pleasing or your child is like you're downplaying your own ideas, your own thoughts, your own wisdom. Sometimes yeah, we all do that, like, right? The, the negative side like, of our why brain. Why would I do yes. that? What's the big deal? I don't need to speak up. Like, right. It doesn't matter to me where I want to eat. It just does it. Like, I don't know what to say. Oftentimes, people do this because some people actually feel guilty of prioritizing themselves. It's like, I don't know. I feel bad. Well, why do you feel bad? We're just, we're just going to a concert. We just want to know what time you want to go. I don't know. I feel bad. Like, I want to go. I, I have my time, but I don't know. Maybe other people don't want to go at that time. 
I was like, and I feel bad about it. Well, why? What time do you want to go? I don't know. I, I want to go around four, but I kind of feel bad about that. See, this is like a, co a common thing because they're like, well, why? Because I don't know. I don't want to cause conflict. Or maybe you guys don't want to go at four, right? This is like how it sounds in real life. Or and, and think about like group settings, right? You just went on a really fun trip with a bunch of families camping, and I think that's fantastic. But have you ever noticed when you get in a group setting or like if you're in a group chat, mm -hmm. it's different with guys because guys will probably just, you know, we're, this is what we're doing. We're going here. But uh, I just find it it's harder to make a decision with your, when you're with a big group because you don't want to offend yes. anybody. Yes. And it's just like, dude, can someone just like give us a direction <laughs> here? Like, golly, we can't, we're not doing anything. Right. <laughs> I think people with the research I saw is people pleasers. Some of the symptoms is they often can over apologize. Oh yeah, I'm really, totally. Really sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Sometimes <laughs> they just they avoid emotional conversations. Like they'll just walk away or they'll start fidgeting. You notice like it's like it's like they just they have a hard time with the uncomfortability of everyday human experience. Well, and Some, and you know I was I was thinking a lot of you like you said you had problems with people pleasing, but. My mm -hmm. vision of Sean Donahue when I was a kid, you never pleased any of us, and you were 23, and you would stand your ground and put us in very awkward situations that no one else had the balls to put us in when we were doing something wrong. So you would step up to the plate immediately, and you almost yeah. like didn't care if people loved you or hated you. You knew what was morally right in that moment. Yeah, thank you for that. I think, I think I've become much more sensitive, but also that Sean who you just described has made some really bad choices, has really hurt people and has been hurt. And so now I have what I would like to believe a little voice in my head being like, okay, Sean, like, you know, let's too approach much. this with sugar and spice here. Okay. Let's, let's maybe like, be careful. Like you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, cross the line here, but thank you. But thank you for sharing that. But here's more symptoms. Do you ever have a, uh, someone in your life who's over committed to things like they just say yes to everything and then they make excuses about why they're late or why they didn't go there or maybe they keep their word and they're just driving their kids all around town they have a hard time saying no to anyone and they're just burnt out because they're over committed yeah. i gotta be thankful for my spouse to to help slow me down because she's been always the one that knows when to say no when there's too mm -hmm. much going on yeah, like I'm going yeah. in a situation right now where I've got family that all wants to come at the same damn weekend. Oh my gosh, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, we can make it happen. She's like, yeah. hold the phone for a second. Yeah, that's you so know, you. we need our time yes. too. And I'm like, yeah, oh, that's I, just so wanna, you. I just want everyone to have a good time. <laughs> yeah, that's so you. Here's a couple of the things we won't go too much into them. For some people, because I have a, I have a few people in my life who are definite struggle with people pleasing. Some people they they have it because it's a low self esteem issue. And yeah, other I think that's a, a big one. Yeah. Pause on that for a second. I think yeah. a lot of the reason why yeah. we people please is we don't have that confidence yet. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. until we get that confidence where then yes. we feel like we could step up to the plate. Right. So it actually makes sense. Like instead of telling someone not be a people pleaser, we build that inner confidence, that inner voice, that inner strength inside of them. And that will then solve people pleasing. Right. It's like it's almost yeah. like a scenario, like you said, is. You know, like in parenting, never nothing's about what it's about. So your your child's people pleasing tendencies, like you've got to look deeper. What's really going on under the surface? Think about a person like I know someone right now in in my, in my life that has been looking for a job for mm. maybe a year, oh has been gosh. to several final calls, <sighs> so last hard. interviews, and always getting passed upon. Mm -hmm. That person's confidence right now is so low feel that person feels like they can't stand so up hard. to anybody or say no to anything right, because right. they have no there's no confidence and, and that's yeah. as simple as like i'm just looking for work which yeah. it's amazing where you can find that confidence is yeah. it in the household is yeah. it at school because yeah. you're popular is it on the job site mm -hmm. because yep you know so yeah well said it's interesting yeah well said like it's similar but some people people please because they they're struggling with perfectionism so on the surface, they might say, I'm a people pleaser, but really what's going on is they have some inner self-talk problems around perfectionism and they're finding their worth or they're finding their order in their life and setting up a perfect schedule. And then it manifests itself in perfection in people pleasing. You see how it's like, right. It's and I can't like, wait to get to your tips, but yeah. I, 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 I want to know, like, is there 
a way to, to cure that? I think there, well, how there do you is. Find, I'm gonna give how do you some find tips. confidence? How do you yeah, find I'm, I'm gonna give some great the ability tips. to not Yeah. Because because I have three kids, you know, I can see like how, you know, some of them are struggling with people pleasing at time. And so I've learned and done some research. I can't wait. The last one I have in my notes is this is like for some people, um, kids, teens and adults alike, on the surface they're struggling with people pleasing, but really if you peel away the layers, what's really going on is codependency where they're like so feeling so needy, like feeling so emotionally connected to somebody. They feel like they just have to people it, please it, to keep it right. going, right? To keep the peace, whether it be your marriage to an alcoholic or your, mm -hmm. your freshman in high school is codependent with their boyfriend or girlfriend or they're codependent with a friend group or they're codependent with their sports performance. That's like, and then it manifests itself on the surface. It looks like people pleasing, but no, you've got, you've got some deeper issues going on there. And that's hard for us to like come to a reality to, to learn or figure out. And I, and you started off this yeah. podcast by asking me, have you ever talked about people pleasing in mm -hmm. depth before? Mm -hmm. And we haven't, a lot of us haven't. Yeah. And I right. think it's because Again, we're fearful mm. to find out maybe right. things that are deep down hidden in us that we, right. we really need to, to, to clean out. Well said, because oftentimes when you reach parenthood, you've had conversations about anger management. You've mm -hmm. had conversations about alcohol. You've had conversations about a gazillion things. But like this needs to be up there. Like this is a big topic. And now let's get into the why. I got some bullet points for us. Let's just touch on a few of the ones why. Let me ask you, when you think about how someone might become like struggle with people pleasing, what's your first guess of, or your thought? How do you think? I mean, the happens? big reason is everyone wants to be liked, right? Yeah. Life is yeah. so much easier being liked. Yeah. Um, well. I'm trying to watch the movie The Sandlot with my kids right now because it's just oh, an yeah. old classic, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and it's so old. It's so funny listening to their comments. But Smalls, you know, in that movie mm -hmm. is just a, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You all of the apologetic, like you said, oh, just I'm yeah. sorry for everything. Yeah. I, I I can't throw the ball. Yeah. I'm sorry. Let me, I, I can't do, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have that confidence yet in, in that realm, in the sports world to, to step up to the plate. So I, yeah. I think a lot of us, we want friends. We want to be liked. We want life to be easy. We want to smile. We want to laugh. Yeah. And, and people pleasing makes it easier for that to happen. So yeah, here's what we'll say. We'll say like an underdeveloped self-esteem is what you just said. We'll make that little little bullet point, yes. An underdeveloped self-esteem can lead to people pleasing. Here's the second thing I got, well said. Okay, we, nature versus nurture. How, why is a child okay. the way a child is? Why is an adult the way it is? Nature versus nurture means nature. It means just how you popped out of uh, your mother's belly, that's your that's your that's your nature but the nurture okay. is huge it's what house you live how you in grow up. how your parents how your siblings your neighborhood how much money you have how you've been f the food that you were right. fed how You're people deal with conflict right so it kind of makes sense that you know there's many children that are raised in a home of people pleasing conflict avoidance and then they become people pleasers i know that one of my best buddies he's doing a lot of inner work on himself because he's even talked to me about it quite a bit when we're hanging out he's like yeah my parents were they never showed us any conflict, never. So when I started having conflict in my marriage, I was like, what's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? No. Right. And so now he's, he struggles with people pleasing and conflict avoidance because it just feels normal to him. And that's the nature of how he was raised. It makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. That's cool that he opened up to you about that because a lot of, a lot of guys wouldn't do that. But isn't it funny too how you say nature versus nurture, how you could have two people in the same household, born the same way, so in the same family, grow up so differently? So interesting. Well, one of my kids, you can just see, has a lot of skill set around kindness, around people skills, patience, and gentleness, and agreeability. But yes, this child it can, can sometimes struggle with people-pleasing. Next, next reason why somebody become a people pleaser is the middle child, man. The middle, <laughs> middle child. child syndrome is a yeah. thing. It's a legit. thing. Legit, you know it's legit. Yeah. The birth order. Middle childs are more prone That's to be pe ple peacemakers. Now I'm a middle child, and so yeah, there's just all the psychology around that. Interesting, huh? Oh man. So if you're having kids and you're at three, maybe have four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or just have two oh i don't God, know yeah, how to fix that one that's funny i don't know if this relates to either of us but some people they were raised in a culture where they were 
told at an early age, you must obey your elders. You must honor yeah. your parents, your your aunts, your great aunts, your great great aunts. You well, that's they biblical tell you to, too, right? Well, yeah, but some cultures take it to a whole different level than oh yeah, like no, you and I were used to. And so then, but essentially, you're teaching children. You have to people please the older people in your life. That's what we do in this right. family. Respect your elders. I mean, that's kind of a lost art nowadays. I feel like I feel like we need mm-hmm. more people to respect their elders. Yeah, we but, sure do. Gosh, but well you're said. right. You you could take it to to the deep end where you have to say yes all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Because how do you stand up to your to your grandpa, your grandma? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. how do you how do you stand your ground and say no to that? Mm-hmm. You know, especially if you're not allowed to. You're not you're especially not supposed if to. You're not they, it's all to. viewed as disrespect or disrespecting your elders. Right. Yeah. Now, this is probably if you were to do deep research or read a book on people pleasing. Th- what I'm about to say next is going to take up a lot of chapters of that book. One of the most common ways that people become people pleasers is by how they were parented. And it wasn't because they were parented by a people pleaser. It's because they were parented by a parent who has a more aggressive or authoritarian parenting style and so what happened this child was raised in a home where the child didn't have much of a voice didn't have the freedom to share opinions or to act out or to be imperfect because this very strong parent would punish them yell at them you know snap at them change them scold them and put fear in them and then this child then decided that the best way for me to cope with my you know, roommate situation with my parents is to become a people pleaser. And so then that's why this then child doesn't do the inner, right. So I don't get yelled at. It's just more accommodating. And then this child wakes up one day, child's 25 has got some pretty serious people pleasing tendencies. So what you just described is what we're seeing in society right now. Right? Like, tell me if you look at it broadly, of course, with a broad brush, especially in your field with how many people pleasers, especially Mm -hmm. parents, people pleasing their kids. Uh, We're trying to coach our kids to not be people pleasers, but we're pleasing our children, saying yes all the time, not saying no, not standing up to them. And we've got weak parents out there. And that's probably because of what you just said. You go back generations and it was the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. I love what you said. Let's sit on that point for a second because like I was – so detached from my parents and growing up so there's uh, a fear in me that my kids are going to detach from me or they're not going to like me so what you just described is something I struggle with at times like how do I step into parenting and be a good strong parent and be a dad a strong dad even though I have a fear that they're they're not going to like me or they're gonna that's what a lot of parents are struggling with because they were maybe so turned off by their parents and now they're afraid like, if I were to say this to my kid, my kid's going to just not like what? me or hate right? me or make it whatever. worse or whatever. Oh, golly, we got to get over that. First yeah. off, your kid's going to like you no matter what you do. I mean, that, that, that statement's obviously over, 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 over blown. But <laughs> I, I feel like we need more parents to step up to the plate and, like, yeah. be good parents. I get so frustrated when I Love see it. just pushovers all the freaking time. What you're well, I love what you're saying, I but mean, let me, let's banter for a second because my next reason of why someone could become a people pleaser is what I, what I have written down here is a trauma response. And maybe I'm talking about myself. Maybe my fear of my kids rejecting me or not liking me is a trauma response because it's like people become people pleasers because they were so traumatized by something or someone in the past that now they bring in the past is their present the prequel right. is the sequel, and now they're right. living in that fear, that afraid of what happened to me in the past, the horrible bad things is going to happen again. I can't have that right. happen. And that sounds it's like all a lot of modern parents. They're afraid that if I am good, a strong parent, then all these bad, scary things are going to happen to my kid. <laughs> so you shared a story with us, I believe it was in the last podcast, about how you had a client come in and you only had the client one time because you coached this client and the, oh, yeah. the client didn't want to take your advice. No, she, no, she didn't. it sounded like she wanted a people please and was like, couldn't deal with the stress of stepping up to the plate. Exactly, she couldn't. In, my question for you is, in mm-hmm. your career, have you had a lot of people 
that had to walk away because you were saying, hey, mm. it's time to stand up for yourself. And they're like, no, I can't. I just oh, can't do gosh. it. Oh, well, it's, I don't what, want my kids to hate a, me. And you're like, what I, a great, <laughs> I just, what a great question. So, okay. So what you're saying is, Sean, have you worked with a lot of parents who struggle with people pleasing? Yes. And I'm assuming you're going to say, yeah, all the time. <laughs> and have you worked with a lot of parents who then you're trying to guide them to give them the inner strength right. and the tools they need to be strong parents? And they say, I just can't do it. And they can't right. do it. And they, they quit. So the, a good coach knows and can sense when someone is about to quit or they're like, you're too mm -hmm. far. So a good coach pushes them, but only at the pace where you know you can that are comfortable with. Right. Because if somebody were right. to come to me and say, I'm really struggling with people pleasing and then they quit, it's actually partly my my responsibility. I, I, I could have probably taken it at a slower pace because it's just Got it. very Smart. scary for that's some good. conflict avoiders, right? But here's the right. part that's kind of funny and it's kind of sad. People who struggle with people pleasing, they don't reach out for help. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. People who struggle because they don't want to be pleasing. fixed, or because they don't even know. Yeah, because it's like people. If you if you did an ad like on a, a parenting ad on Facebook or a, and says like need help right. stopping to yell, click here. Right. A lot of parents <laughs> are going to click that. Right. If you say need help yes. stopping to people please your kids, like no one's going to click on that. It's like you're right. Because right? we don't, we because we don't, we probably don't, we don't even know we're doing it. We don't talk about it. We don't. It's a strong word. I'm going to use the word. It, we don't demonize people pleasing the way it should be demonized. Like now, if you have a co-parent yeah. who is super soft and it's always people pleasing the kid, you got a good cop, bad cop situation. Now that is common. Sure. So it's like we're talking about the same thing. But if you say good cop, bad cop. Well, then that is like something like, oh, that's what we're talking about the whole time. Yes, you guys. Yes. This whole conversation is yes, about being okay. the good cop <laughs> and how you became the good cop, why you shouldn't be the good cop, how it's horrible on a marriage. It's horrible for kids. It's horrible for you to be the good cop. There should be no good cops. There should be no bad cops. There should just be cops. <laughs> I make a t-shirt of that. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> What do you think? That's like, good. Did I get weird there? Does that make <laughs> sense? Good. Like, do you like? I like that. Do you want to be That's the good really cop? Good. And do you want your dad, your wife, to be the no, bad cop? No, it makes sense. Doesn't it? Just cops, right? No, that's terrible. You don't want to have that, that label. Terrible. I want to be both. I want to be the one yeah. who can comfort you and the one that can be strict and and guide yes. you and be like, no, that is not okay. And I want yes. them to have the same principles. Gosh. That story you told on the boat last week, I mean, that was one of the best stories I've ever heard anyone say. And if you didn't hear that episode, go back because Jordan talked about how he want a story where he showed up as a really strong man, but also as a very sensitive, loving man. And I, those old days of like, I'm the man, I'm the strong one, she's the wife, she's the sensitive one, those are over. Like women should be strong and sensitive. Right. Men should be strong and sensitive. Right? Like, why do we, like, this is who we are. This is who we've always been. This isn't something new. Like, this is the human experience. This is the, the alpha and the omega, the lion and the lamb. This is the being a sheep and a lion. It's like, these are all good things to be cuddly and be a pillow, but also to be a lion. Yeah. It's just knowing how to control it and when is needed for the time being, right? Because your kids need you yeah. to be that fierce leader sometimes. And the kids need you to be that soft little Santa Claus sometimes. Doesn't that make sense? Oh, yeah. Fun. And I love it's it too fun. when when there's situations where the kids, the kids like the little ones will just be coming to daddy all the time, right? No, I don't want mommy. I just want daddy. I want mm -hmm. daddy. I want daddy. And then mm -hmm. I'll see it shift maybe a couple days later. I just want mommy. Yeah. I just want mommy. Right. And it's cool because it shows you there is that balance. Yes. Right. And it's not just I'm only going to mom. Right. I'm only going right. to dad. I've talked about this man numerous times on this podcast. I have a, a man who is a very strong person, very strong personality. He's a fireman. He looks like a fireman, which means he's got that mustache or those handlebars. He's big and stocky, and he's very strong. <laughs> but he's a big cuddler. His kids cuddle with him, and his kids love him. And, yeah, he's unpredictable at times because he's a fireman. He's a strong man. But, yeah, that's, how, that's who we all should be. 
And this is why the thing, people pleasing, it's like you're probably more more comfortable with the softer side of life. And we're trying to help you to find your voice and to help your kids find their voice. And now we're at the part of the podcast here, which is Ask the Family Coach. I got five action steps for us. All right? Please, so, I'm begging you for these because okay. I'm so curious. Ultimately, we need to to learn how to say no, to learn yeah. how to stand up for ourselves, but more importantly, teach it to our kids so they could do the same thing in a very well tough said. world. I think you're really going to like the first one because all five points are juicy, but the first one is the juiciest, like that nice summer watermelon full <laughs> of juice. Now, th- you maybe never heard this before, but I made a social media video on this topic, what I'm about to say, and it went viral, which really made it send a message to me as like a content creator. Wow, people crave this information. So here's the first tip. Teach your children to stand up to you, to speak up to you. What do you think oh, about wow. that? Oh, wow. Okay, hold on. Let me coach, think about that for a second. Right, you got to let that process. A parent coach yeah. just advise you, you teach your kids to stand up to you. So what I didn't say is teach your kids to obey you and respect you and right. follow you like a little robot. I actually just said teach your children to stand up to you and speak up to you in a strong, respectful way. Which then ultimately means we have to be cool when these kids are learning how to do that and are pushing our buttons at the same time. Did anybody example. teach you to stand up to me? Like, did anybody take no. you when you were a kid or teenager? Hey, did they say something like this to you? Hey, um, do you like what I just said or do you not like it? Right. Just tell me. Like, right. I want you to speak up. Tell me. Are you upset at me? Did I cross the line? <laughs> what do you think about this? Did anyone ever yeah. do that for you when you were a kid? I don't no. think anyone did it for me. I didn't really get that till I um, went into my first, like, um, coaching class like a mind development class where Mm. where you actually can delve inside you and start thinking about you instead of just thinking about outside forces how they impact you think about how you think about things that ultimately help you live life and how you view life and i was like oh okay well shoot i am a people oh dang dang yeah i I do do why why am i okay let's dive in deeper um but when it comes to us teaching the kids how to do that you could say well sean my kids just say no, and they and they 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 shut the door in my face, and they're they're standing up to me. But that's not okay. Yeah. So a lot of kids are not struggling with people pleasing. They're gonna <laughs> yell. They're gonna whine. They're gonna be annoying. They're gonna react. Yes. They're gonna hit. They're gonna call names. I hate you. This is why I hate mm-hmm. you. You're the worst parent ever. So right. that's not healthy. So isn't it make sense that? parents or teachers in every home's a school so that we'd actually say to them like hey um you know that conversation we had earlier like how did i do how did, did you do, how do you feel about it and then your kid is going to say it was stupid you're being so mean you say i really appreciate you like not stuffing this and telling me about it i'd rather you tell me than just stuff it and avoid this so tell me like what what did you not like about it and say, well, you were being so stupid. So well, hold on, hold on, no. I want you to tell me, but I want you to tell me in a respectful, kind way. So instead of saying I was being stupid, can you tell me, like, what did you not like about it? I don't know. You were just being mean. Right. Well, okay, but tell me, how was I being mean? Did it hurt your feelings? Yeah. Okay, what part hurt your feelings? Yeah, but you, you know what you did there and there. Right. Okay, you now didn't we're give me what I somewhere. wanted. So, you know, we're emotion coaching our children how to stand up to an adult because if we can teach a nine-year-old and a 19-year-old how to stand up to us in a healthy, respectful way, what are we actually doing for their life? Do they... (laughs) Yeah, uh, I've got a lot of things in my mind right now. So, obviously, you're going to be looked at as like a weird parent in that moment from your kid. Gosh, dad, you're being so weird right now. Like, just leave me alone. Yeah. Right? If you don't have a, if you don't have a home culture of the children coaching the parents or the children giving their feedback to the parents, that would mm-hmm. be weird. But if you do have a home culture of shared collaboration, would it be weird? Can you give me an example of what a healthy, 
event where a kid could stand up to their parents in a respectful way. Yeah. Like, let's say we're at senior year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've, we've taken all these classes to become, uh, you know, coached by you. And we're perfect. Mm-hmm. How would this event go down? So, yeah, let me just try to imagine a few scenarios right now. And you think of one, too. So, like, here's here's the thing, like, um, I say to, like, because I've got two teenagers, um, use, one of the ways you can teach them is by using the word boundaries. Be like, hey, did I, um, hey, did I cross the line, you know, when I was talking to your friend about this topic? And they say, yeah. I was like, okay. I didn't know, I didn't think I did, but um, I really want to honor your boundaries. So tell me about that. Or this, um, like one of my children, I, I mentioned them on a podcast once, not by name, but some of their behaviors, and they didn't like that. Sure. And so mm-hmm. what I did was I was like, you know what, I really want to honor your boundaries. Um, on this podcast and everything I do, I love you. And I, I really, I really screwed up and I really want to make this up to you, but I, I'm really glad you're speaking up. She's like, no, it's fine. It's not a big deal. It is a big deal. It is a big deal. And this is why I want to talk about, it. I don't want to talk about this. Okay. We don't need to talk about it, but you have a, you have strong feelings. You deserve to be loved and treated with respect. So I'm really glad you're speaking up to me about this. So please keep speaking up to me so I can really hear you. Did that answer your question? It's like role playing out a scenario. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. It did. But I'm almost wondering the event that transpired for that prompt that for you to prompt that conversation. So give me an example, not that one, but of one mm-hmm. where your kid stands up to you, is mad about something, but yeah. they've actually done it in a really respectful way where you've coached them to do it perfectly. Right. Well, it's yeah, not going to make you mad as a parent. Like, I'm thinking of the exact opposite. Right. Like, hey, kids, uh, get in the car this weekend. It's Sunday morning. We're going to church. No, yeah. I'm not going. I don't want right. to go. And Okay, right. I'm teaching them to stand up to me and to say no. But right mm-hmm. now they're pushing my buttons, and this is yeah. not okay because we're going as a family. You know what I mean? Like, right. So how, what's the, the healthy thing that comes to mind with like? you is that I don't, I'm just going to make up a number in my head. Let's say 33%. 33% okay. of kids struggle with people pleasing. You you have three kids, Jordan. Okay. Is there a chance that none of your kids are in that thirty three percent? None of them struggle with people pleasing. Is that a possibility? No. Like they they speak their mind. No. Right now, right now, no. But I guess technically there is a chance of that. But no, there's not. Right. So you don't. So you're asking me for a scenario because you're not. You're not even coming up with any scenarios yourself. So, but for some parents, I, I know because I want to know what a perfect one looks like. Like. Like uh, the people pleasing, where the is, parent doesn't get mad that the kid is standing up to their parents when you want to teach them how to so stand up. So that's what you want, you want right? To do it so in a way that's not going to tick you off. Yeah, because if we're going to be our child's person, it means our kids are going to come to us—the good and the bad and the ugly. And so what we're going to do is we're going to yeah. we're not going to react when they come with the ugly or the bad. We're going to coach them on how to speak their okay. minds, but in a respectful way, not in a people pleasing way. And not in a harsh, disrespectful way. And that fine line is what we're we're trying to sit in here. We're trying to simmer because let's say that a people pleasing thing would be like, hey, did I um, hey did I cross the line? You know, when I was talking to you earlier, because I actually did. I was talking about one of my kids' friends, and I can just tell by this my child's body language, like they did not like it. And they said, no, it's fine, it's fine. But I was like, that's people pleasing right there. It's not honest. Mm. It was not fine. So then I came back later right. on and I right. used some of these tools that I'm going to tell you right now. And I'm saying, look, I really I, don't people please me, please. Just tell me, did I cross the line? Yes. I really want to hear it. And guess what the okay. child said? Okay, that's good. Yes. I like that. Yes. Yes. So here's the next, here's the next number two tip. Number one tip on how to not raise people pleasers is to teach them to stand up to you. We coach in them. a respectful way yes. in the heat of the moment or Good afterwards stuff. or both. Number two is use the term people pleasing. Okay. Because when you say to somebody, say, Hey, okay. just, please don't people please me. It can be very helpful. Like I have a good friend is my age and he's told me he struggled with people pleasing. So what I found is hanging out with him. He people pleases me sometimes in the heat of the moment. So what I've learned is that I'll call him up or I'll text him like, Hey man, just check him. 
were you people pleasing me? Like, do you really want to do this? <laughs> and sometimes she's like, yeah, I was kind of people pleasing. I don't know if I can do that. My schedule. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, I mean, and not a lot of people have friends like you where they're going to call them up and ask that. What we're going to say is, no, he's a big boy. He could figure it out. He'll say no if he needs to say no. Right? Yeah, that's that's the goal. But let's just say 33% of the people we know struggle with people pleasing. So wouldn't it be kind to be like checking in? Yes. But, I mean, yeah. we don't. We I, don't I, talk I would about never ask someone, ask me that. Or let's say your child is like, hey, um, I know, let's say you got like, you know, you got five people and they're all going to decide to go mini golfing or go to the movie. And your little sweet yeah. child is like, I don't care. They both sound fun. And it's like a two to two tie and it comes down to your child and your child, which one do you <laughs> want to do? I, I just don't know. I can't, I don't know. Whatever you guys want. And everyone's upset because the person didn't take a vote. So you could use this tool. You could pull them to the side or you can pull them together after his hey just want to check with you were you people pleasing the group yeah that's good um, using the terminology using the term I like, that. like yes i don't know i don't know yeah you do i just yeah. don't know well what just be honest what would you prefer to do well i would have i wanted to go mini golfing well then why didn't you vote for that because sarah know. wanted to go to right. do this i feel bad right. i feel bad because right. sarah would be upset because she really wanted yeah. to go to the movies Correct. Right, but see, sweetie, this is people pleasing. You've, you, we, everyone had one vote, and we care about you. We care about your vote, and so that's people pleasing. And I really want us to work on that, because that's <laughs> not honest. What was honest would have been you voting for the movies. I know. Right. I, just, I didn't want. I didn't want to do that. It just feels <laughs> awkward for me. That's this no, is this every is day, good. right? This okay. Is, yeah. No, right? this is good. I like it. All right. I'm gonna start using that term. Okay, okay, next, next yes. number three is this. Oftentimes, people pleasers are pleasing because they're getting um, anxious in the heat of the moment or in the group dynamics. Okay, they just want to move on. They're done with mm -hmm. it. It's just hard. That, like, let's that, just, yeah. like that's example right there, movies. Yeah. Or, or let's yeah. say there's like in the heat of the moment, let's just let's bring up like an X-rated example. Let's say two teenagers are making out and yeah. one wants to go a little farther. Mm -hmm. and the person's pushing this person to go farther. Sure. Third example. Let's say that there's um, you know, a double date, and you're all talking about where you're going to go eat. And so you're like, come on, let's make a decision. Let's go, let's go. Or come on, do this, do this. Come on, it'll be fun, it'll be fun, let's do it, right? That's like the person pushing. What the more loving thing to do would be like, hey, I want you to take your time. Take your time. No rush really want to hear what you have to say and i know making decisions are hard for you so but take your time wouldn't that be a, a great way to not raise a people pleaser instead of because you could make the argument that a lot of people pleasers become people pleasers because they're raised by anxious parents who are always pushing them to make quick decisions isn't that that's right that's deep right there yeah that's kind of deep they're raised by impatient parents and they just realize my parents are freaking wackadoodles. They're so stressed out. They're always moving around. They move super, super fast, and they never take the time to hear my opinion. So I just realized it's much easier for me to just be like, eh, whatever. That's right. interesting. Dude, Sean, life's too short. We can't sit here and dwell on this decision. Make a decision and go. Let's go. Or You only get hey. one opportunity. Or hey. You know how B-Rabbit, who Eminem, one opportunity, don't let it. <laughs> don't like the You got one opportunity. Would well, you think I'm being weird or overly sensitive by saying, "Hey, take your time," or do you think it's a nice and loving thing to do? So honestly, I would say you're borderline being weird, but okay. I think it's probably because I'm not used to having conversations like this, and so it's awkward for me to talk about stuff like that. It's like, dude, just grow up and let's figure it out and move on instead of us sitting here and sure. dwelling on this. Did you? You know, did you, did, did, did I, did you people please? Did I people please? Hmm. If somebody were to come up to a young Jordan, he's like, you know, 14 years old and be like, Hey man, what do you really want to do? What's best for you? Just take your time. Don't be able to please me. Yeah. How do you, do you think that would have been good for you? That's a great, that's a great question. You're right. I'd be like, Oh man, what do I want to do with my life? Oh, um, 
<laughs> then I can really think about it. Yeah. That's not weird. Okay. All right. Here's I don't know next... why. I, I, I just... That's not weird, right. Well, I think if you had a yeah, child that's really What's suffering next? from people pleasing, you know, I think this maybe this episode would even be easier for you to listen to because you would see the dangers of it. Or maybe you would even see yourself in them. No, I, like, I, I, I do. And I could see my kids going down that path. I could yeah. see it right now. And I right. just, I need to coach myself into becoming this coach that you're wanting us to be because it's a great person to be. It's just, I've never done that. So it's like a little awkward for me to like have these conversations and maybe it's bringing up anxiety. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it. I'm people pleasing myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Right. It brings up so much anxiety. This is why so few people pleasers do this type of inner work. Or, or challenge their kids to not be people pleasers. They just give these speeches like, you know, don't be a people pleaser. Don't give in to peer pressure when you got to go to the root of the issue. Here's the fourth right. tip so far. What do we do to not raise pleasers? Well, we teach them to stand up to us because we are their teachers. We want to model that. Number two, we use the term people please when we're coaching them. Number three, we say, take your time. We help yes. them slow down and make decisions. And number four action step we can do is we okay. help them with their inner self talk. So let me do a little role playing to see how this plays out. Okay. So, Hey, um, I don't know. I'm just hate it because all the kids, it's these, the kids hate me and I don't even have any, you know, true friends. And I, if I don't do these things, well then they're not gonna, they're not gonna like me and say, Hey, I, I really want you to think about what's, what's true and what's true right now. Okay. Because just because they're upset at you, it doesn't, you know, mean you did anything wrong. It's okay. If people are upset at you, this is a normal thing. It's a part of life. And so I want you to tell yourself that, you know, you, if you don't stand for something, you won't stand for anything. These are the type of things I want you to think about. You can't please everyone. You can't please everyone. And if you're trying to, well, then problems are going to happen for you. So when you're sitting there, when you're thinking today on this car ride, I want you to think about it. It's good to care about your friends. It's good. It's good to care, but you can care too much. So I want you to be thinking about that. Ask yourself, am I caring mm. too much? Maybe it's hard for you to be different or feel different. It's hard for me to feel different. But when you talk to yourself, this is what I want you to say. I want you to say, I feel different than them and that's okay. It's okay that I want to go play mini golf and it's okay that my friends don't. I'm different than them and that's okay. It's okay and if my true friends really care about me, well, they're going to understand it's okay that I'm different. I, they're my good friends and I can find my voice. And here's another thing you can say to yourself is, hey, like, if someone has a, a crisis going on, that's their emergency not my emergency. So you want you to think that to yourself. When you see stressed people, you know, I know that can stress you out. Yes, it does. I hate conflict, right? But you can say, hey, say this to yourself. Just because someone's having a crisis doesn't mean I'm in crisis. Or just because somebody wants something from me doesn't mean I need to give it to them. I'm different than them. And this is the type of inner self-talk coaching that I think our kids will really benefit from if we can give it to them. Was that too much? That's amazing. Shoot, man. Uh, no, us adults could use that as well. That's amazing. Oh, I think the oh, hardest okay. part is for like just thinking of myself in a conversation like that, how to come up with those words. That was really wise. Oh, thank you. Was there one that you stood out to you or that and how you to like more than the others? Like which of those do you think you would have benefited? No, from dude, all of it was great. Result? But like just it, what I loved about it is you made what I love about it is you made me as a child think about how other people's actions are not my responsibility mm -hmm. how other people's feelings are not necessarily based mm -hmm. off my actions that's good thanks yeah which is a very grown-up thing well our kids are never going to take class in any of this topic they're never going to take class on codependency setting boundaries people pleasing and so we are their teachers so if right. we can we want to do our best to talk to them about these things that even though we're still learning about them as adults and we're still struggling with them as adults. And I get the fifth, fifth action step, yeah. all right? All right, fifth action step is labels are very powerful. So when you say this is my shy child or this is my quiet child 
or this is my easygoing child, think right. twice. You probably don't want to describe or label your kid that way. Do, do you think that, you know, were you labeled at all as a kid? And what do you see as the dangers of labeling children this way? I mean, we try, we're honestly as parents trying to use positive labels to make them believe, right? Mm -hmm. But the danger with that is by saying you're so smart, like you've said, and they fail a test, then they'll feel so stupid. When the reality is we need to praising their effort and the mm -hmm. fact that they're working very hard, right? And yeah, that's the important right. thing. So with yeah. labels, uh, we're trying to make them build up their courage and building up their inner yeah. talk. Yeah, but we're yeah. not doing it right is what you're saying. Yeah. I think the reason why a parent would say, like, oh, this is this is my shy child or this is my quiet child is because they're actually people-pleasing right there. They're embarrassed. They're going through something because their child is act acting socially awkward or quiet in this social setting, and that's how they're describing the child. But if you call your child or label your child these things, easygoing, quiet, or shy, well, then you might get what you're looking for. <laughs> You might get a shy child for a life. They might think, yeah, I'm just quiet. I'm not good with people. And that, you, you yeah, just might raise true. the people pleaser because, and this is my people pleasing child. And this is my right. angry child. And this is my screen addicted child. Like, why would we do this, right? Right. I don't know. There's just traits. It's like, you know, the saying, boys will be boys. Like, for anybody that's had a little boy that's all boy. And a yeah. little girl that's yeah. all girl. Yeah. Like, I like playing with dolls. I like throwing rocks. I like <laughs> to braid hair. I like monster trucks. Uh -huh. There are these, you know, stereotypical yeah. things yeah. that I think we're just using in conversations to describe them with other people. And you're saying some of those things probably don't need to be said in front of the kids. Well, here's some good news. If you're going to label your kids, if you want to categorize them, here's some more replacements to not rape people pleasers. You could say this to your said. You could say, "Hey, this is, yep, this is my this is my Shelly, and Shelly is very thoughtful. She likes to take her time. And one <laughs> thing I love about Shelly is, in a world where there's just so many rude people, rude politicians, people who are just, you know, just not thinking before they talk. Not my Shelly. Shelly is a very thoughtful person. When she speaks her mind, she always really thinks it through. And I love this about Shelly. See what I just did right there." Yes, that's sweet. That you built her up. You can say to your, you can say to your Shelly, you say to your Jason. You built her hey, up. You are strong. You are fierce. You are interesting, and you are enough. So if you need time making your decision, take your time. We want to hear what you really have to say. Well, I don't know. I don't know what I want, and that's okay. I know. I know. You're, you get really. It's hard for you making decisions. Yes, it is. But don't people please me? If you need to take some time. Well, then take your time. And if we can't make a decision as a family until you're ready, and that's okay. Oh, my gosh. You can't make a decision until you, because of me? Right, but this is what it means to be a part of the family. It's normal, and you're a strong person. I know you can tell us what you really are feeling when you're ready. See, this is, see we're just coaching the child. I have, have. A, I have a guilty confession. Okay. Okay, what's coming up for you? My guilty confession is I label my son as not liking anything like hey what do you guys want to do this weekend oh let's go on the boat i don't want to go on the boat well you don't want to do anything that's what i say to him all the time mm -hmm. hey let's go see a movie i don't want to go see a movie mm -hmm. well you don't want to do anything mm -hmm. and i say it probably every weekend well you don't want to do anything you never want to do anything mm -hmm. right i just keep saying this yeah instead that's good i should take your advice Be like that's you know good. what i love that you love being in the comfort of our home in our homebody yeah. don't want to stay here yeah. and be around the house that's great that's good. but yeah. it's also good to go out and do things too and have adventures yes yeah by i think it i don't know if it's going to work like a magic wand but when you say that to your kid he's going to feel accepted he's going to feel seen and he's probably going to be more willing to leave the yeah. house because it's like okay my dad really sees me my dad understands me yeah right thanks for sharing that man yeah yeah, I used to. Yeah, no, thanks for coaching us through it because that's one, one thing I could change like, right now. That's I used to call one of my kids like, "Gosh, you have no self control. Like, can you control yourself? You have <laughs> to get self control, right? So that's like what you. It's like you're just right. blasting that identity on someone, and then you're gonna grow up thinking like, yeah, I have no self control. That's just who I am. That's what my dad's been telling me my whole life. Like, right, no self control. 
But then instead, when it comes to people pleasers, people who are struggling with fear and anxiety, you say to them, hey, you have what it takes. You have what it takes. I know you can stand up for yourself. I believe in you. Hey, you can people please your friends if you want. You can. I've seen you do it before. But you right. don't have to. You don't have to. You know? Hey, you can people please me if you want to, but you don't have to. And this is something really good. Hey, there's lots of friends out there who can accept you for who you are. You don't it's have so to prove good. yourself. You don't have to people please them. You know what? You don't have to people please. So it's just bringing this EQ awareness to our kids is going to hopefully save them from a life of people pleasing and anxiety and medication. <laughs> Making bad yeah. decisions. No, I mean the more the more we coach our kids right now, yeah, this is this is this is so important and so wise. And the younger you can start, the more confident they could be. I yeah, can right. already see confidence in my nine and ten year olds. Yes. Uh, you know, and, and, and you'll you'll be able to see that too, and it'll be so worth it when they get older in the real world. We did good work together today, everybody. We went through the downside, we talked about the signs and symptoms. We talked about the why of some people become people pleasers and then action steps. And you know, and I'm just thankful that we have gentle, loving, patient people in the world. Don't we actually need more lovely, like people who are accommodating in the world? Don't, don't we need more people like that who are just easy to be around? Please. <laughs> please. please a lot more <laughs> please so if you are struggling with people pleasing just know we love you do not lose your gentle spirit but i hope you find the inner strength you need to not, to change to become healthy and to lead your kids into healthy things hey thanks for uh letting us share this with you please go on um and leave us a review on apple podcast and uh please stay in touch on social medias Love being in your life.